Hi everyone, Jim O'Brill here with Drive Chicago. This week we're taking a look at the 2021 Mazda CX-5. This is Mazda's best-selling vehicle and is a five-passenger compact crossover. It's currently in its second generation and was most recently restyled in 2017. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter turbo engine that delivers up to 250 horsepower on premium fuel. New for 2021 is standard 10.25 inch center display screen with updated Mazda Connect infotainment. Also new is an exclusive carbon edition model that adds unique paints, wheels, and red leather interior. Our test model this week is a turbo signature model of the CX-5, so let's hop in and take a closer look at the 2021 Mazda CX-5. The Mazda CX-5 is offered with two different engine options that are both mated to a six-speed automatic within six trims. The base engine is a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine that's tuned to make 187 horsepower. This engine comes standard in the Sport, Touring, Carbon Edition, and Grand Touring models. The top trims, the Grand Touring Reserve and Signature, come standard with a turbocharged 2.5 liter four-cylinder that makes 227 horsepower on regular grade fuel or up to 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque with premium grade fuel. The 2.5 liter turbo is also available as an upgrade on the new Carbon Edition model. The downside of all this power that comes in the CX-5 is its fuel economy. It's rated at 22 city, 27 highway, and 24 miles per gallon combined, which is lower than some of the competitors that approach the 30 miles per gallon combined rating. The normally aspirated engine is available with either front or all-wheel drive, while the Turbo 4 is only offered with all-wheel drive. Starting prices range from around $25,000 for the Sport up to $37,500 for a signature model. Competition for the CX-5 includes vehicles like the Chevy Equinox, the Ford Escape, Honda CRV, Nissan Rogue, Subaru Forester, Toyota RAV4, and Volkswagen Tiguan, just to name a few. After spending a week in the Mazda CX-5, there were a few things that stood out that I really liked about this vehicle. My test vehicle was a signature model equipped with a turbo engine and the jump in horsepower was immediate gratification after driving competitors like the Rogue and RAV4. The quick shifting 6-speed is smooth off the line and goes 0-60 to 60 in 6.1 seconds and it's been tested at 14.6 seconds in the quarter mile going 94.9 miles per hour. It sits at the top of the class with off-the-line performance, except for maybe the Toyota RAV4 Prime, which Toyota estimates a 0-60 time in under 6 seconds. It has responsive steering and was very capable of handling quick turns. In this class, it was an unexpected surprise to get a vehicle that could handle an autocross serpentine with ease. It was quite agile and athletic with very little body roll. The engine performs effortlessly and with control. Add in a decent turbo tone from under the hood and I was sold. Mazda also includes a sport button to further enhance the dynamics and acceleration of the turbo engine. This vehicle is best off the line and in quick maneuvers, but at higher speeds the 6-speed automatic starts to feel a little dated. Newer competitors are offering 8 speeds, which I speculate we may see in an upcoming Mazda CX-5 for the next generation. Regardless, the CX-5 remains the most fun to drive compact crossover I've seen and driven in among the competition. Another thing that stands out in the CX-5 is its design. Despite its age, it still looks captivating and modern among the competition. The CX-5 embodies Mazda's Kodo design, which means soul of motion. The lines of this crossover are smooth and fluid without an ounce of ruggedness. The aggressive front end looks angry with slim LED headlights and a chrome grille trim that expands under the lights, creating a very wide presence. From its side profile, the nose of the CX-5 is notably longer while the rear C-pillar is rounded with only subtle creases for definition. Accents of chrome along the windows add a statement of elegance, and around back the rear is simple and sophisticated. The jewel-like taillights have a nice lighting signature that feels very premium. The dimensions of this car feel just right with minimal overhang and wheels that fill the arches. Mazda has nailed the proportions, making the CX-5 look good from all angles. Five years later and the CX-5 still looks stunning and comes in a variety of colors with unique wheel options that complement the body style. Finally, hopping inside the CX-5 is the last thing that really stands out to me. The inside exudes luxury with high quality materials and a simple clean design. Drivers face a traditional digital cluster with three circular dials for RPM, speed, fuel, and temperature. Within the center dial is a digital screen that will display a variety of information in a small area. The CX-5 also comes with an available heads-up display which I continue to find more and more appealing as I use it. Steering wheel controls are well placed and complement the digital dial for the infotainment screen. 
amenities such as a leather wrapped heated steering wheel, heated and ventilated seats, integration of layered wood trim, and brushed silver accents complete the luxurious vibe in the CX-5 cabin. While there's a lot that I really like about the CX-5, there are a couple things that need some improvement. First is the interior space. While I like the interior vibe and materials, the CX-5 felt much tighter in comparison to both the Rogue and RAV4. When all three of my kids were in the back seat, I felt bad for the one in the middle seat. Cargo capacity is also significantly lower than the competitors. Mazda's capacity in the CX-5 is 59.6 cubic feet, and many competitors exceed that with vehicles like the Honda CR-V or Subaru Forester even topping 75 cubic feet. Secondly is the infotainment system. This one's a little bit tricky because new for 2021 is a 10.25 inch infotainment display which replaces an outgoing 7 or 8 inch unit. This is definitely a plus for the 2021 models. The screen remains atop the dash giving an illusion that it arises from within, however it is stationary, and it does integrate with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The screen though is controlled via a jog dial located in the center console. The dial turns, tilts, and can be pushed for various controls. It does not have a touchscreen function, which seems to be a miss on Mazda's part. The jog dial control was a little bit awkward for the first few days and had me using Apple CarPlay exclusively because of its familiarity. However, after the third day of use, something clicked in my brain that made the jog dial and adjacent volume knob seem like second nature. Even though I grew to appreciate it, and I think adding a touchscreen function would be a quick fix here. In summary, the Mazda CX-5 is a great car. The category comes with a lot of options, and this one should not be overlooked. It stands out, in my opinion, as the most fun to drive in the group. So if driving dynamics are important, it will be hard to find a competitor that it matches. Outside of its performance, it also offers stylish good looks, a sophisticated interior, and borders on luxury level appointments. There is room for some improvement in regards to the infotainment technology, cargo capacity, and overall cabin space, but Mazda has built a great vehicle that has become even better with the second generation. Rumors continue to swirl about a third generation coming out in 2022, and I know that I'm one that looks forward to seeing what Mazda has up its sleeve. That's a wrap of our review of the 2021 Mazda CX-5. This car's been a lot of fun to drive, that turbo really kicks in, and so far this is one of my favorite compact crossovers to drive. For more information on the CX-5, visit drivechicago.com to read a full review or to find a Mazda dealer near you where you can take one out for a test drive. I'm Jim O'Brill with Drive Chicago. Thanks for watching.